We've got a lot of ground to cover on today's show as the Broncos announced that they are unveiling new uniforms soon, so we'll check those out. But Sean Payton spoke to the media at the NFL owners meeting, and he talked about the possibility of trading up in the draft. And I'll be honest, he gave some pretty juicy quotes, which I'm going to share with you guys. So a lot to get to on today's show, which is why you subscribe to the channel. There is no other Broncos YouTube channel that got you guys a video with all this news and all the facts as soon as we did. So join over 21,000 strong if you have not already. Now let's get right into the fun stuff here. Sean Payton was asked about the possibility of trading up and whether or not it's doable. And he said, I think that's realistic. I think it's realistic. What's hard to predict, though, is what's on the receiving end. I think it's going. I think it's good to be Monty. That's the GM for the Cardinals today at Arizona. So it's hard to predict what that cost is. And yet, I certainly wouldn't say it's unrealistic. We'll pay close attention to it. I still have my doubts about the probability and the logistics of Denver trading up in the draft, but just. Surface level, I'm not surprised Sean Payton is saying something like this for two big reasons. One, if he goes in front of the media and says, it's going to be impossible to trade up, all of a sudden, the Cardinals and the Patriots, if they have any interest in trading down, they now know Denver believes it'll be super expensive. So they're going to make a very expensive offer, right? Sean Payton is out there kind of muddying the water saying, it's realistic to trade up. Why would he build up the value of the pick he's trying to get to to an expensive lot that he cannot afford because he already can't afford it? So for that reason alone, I'm not surprised he says something like this. Now you tack on the fact that it is almost April and the Broncos quarterback room is Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci. Yeah, you have a lot of fires to put out in Denver right now, and you're certainly not going to make life any easier for yourself with the media and the fan base if you don't at least offer a glimmer of hope that you might move up in the draft. And that's why I think Sean Payton is trying to keep people calm right now, but I think he even knows it's highly unlikely that they can make an offer that the Patriots or the Cardinals would accept over better offers that other teams can make for those spots right there. To me, I think it's probably a two-horse race right now between the Broncos and the Vikings to really make a big jump up, right? Some team outside of the top 10 going into the top 10. And the Vikings, well, they are showing their hand. They traded for an additional first-round pick with the Texans last week. They have the 11th and the 23rd overall pick to offer, whether it is the Vi uh, whether it is the Patriots at three or the Vikings, I'm sorry, or the Cardinals at four. What offer can Denver make that is better than what the Vikings can offer? And if you think, well, you could include Patrick Sertan, one, I don't want to do that. Two, we just saw Legereus Sneed go for a third-round pick. Unfortunately, I don't think a team is actually going to have Patrick Sertan move the needle so much that you could be maybe okay with not receiving an extra first-round pick in addition. So when you look at the NFL draft order, you've got – Vikings at 11, the Denver Broncos at 12, sitting just outside the top 10. I mean, the Chargers are just not going to trade with the Broncos. Just rule that out. So you've got two real options, the Patriots and the Cardinals at 3 and 4, because some of the buzz right now to the NFL owners meeting is there may be four quarterbacks that go 1, 2, 3, 4. So if it is Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and the Arizona Cardinals are open to trading that fourth overall pick for a team that wants to go up and get J.J. McCarthy. Well, I'm looking at the Giants at 6, the Vikings at 11, and the Broncos at 12, right? How is Denver going to make a better offer than two teams ahead of them? Especially if the Giants just want to bump up a few spots. The Cardinals would definitely do that, and they could get Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors at 6, or maybe Marvin Harrison all along if the Chargers go offensive tackle at number five. So for me, the question becomes, will New England and Arizona both trade down, right? Can you get both those teams to trade out? Because if the Patriots stay put, they go quarterback. So now it's all on Arizona. Or if the Patriots don't go, don't go quarterback, can you find a trade partner with the Arizona Cardinals? To me, it just seems unlikely that both of these teams trade down. And I think that's what's necessary 
Because what if the Vikings jump up to number three with the Patriots and they go Jaden Daniels or Drake May? Now you need the Arizona Cardinals to be open to trading from four to 12 because the Giants at six, they could sneak up and get J.J. McCarthy. So there's a lot of moving pieces here, but ultimately I just think there are too many contenders ahead of Denver in the draft order that can make much better offers to move up in the draft than the Broncos can which is why I don't see Denver getting up to J.J. McCarthy if he does go top four, top five, top six, right? Maybe this is all smoke and mirrors and J.J. McCarthy is this year's Will Levis and he doesn't go round one at all, right? That happened with Malik Willis. Remember all the mock drafters that said he would go round one? Didn't happen. So if J.J. McCarthy truly is going to be one of the first four, five, six picks in the draft, I don't see Denver being the team that makes that selection. So will the Broncos trade up, though? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know down below in the comment section whether or not you think the Broncos are going to trade up. Now, we spend all this time discussing whether or not it is realistic and whether it is smart for the Broncos to move up, which personally, I would say stay put, maybe even look to trade back and get some more picks because you don't want to put yourself in another hole after giving up a huge amount of draft capital for a quarterback and then go from Russell Wilson to a potential bus quarterback and have five, six, seven years of Broncos country just wasting their time. So is J.J. McCarthy worth trading up for, right? If the answer is yes, that you can make a move up and the Cardinals, that the Vikings go to New England and the Cardinals are willing to fall from four all the way to 12, which maybe they're not. Maybe they want to get Marvin Harrison and there's no offer Denver can make that would sway them away from that. But let's just say they're okay with going back eight spots and, getting a future first, a future second, a future third, and a whole lot more probably, is J.J. McCarthy worthy of that type of haul to move up and get? I'm going to answer that question next up on the show. But first, today's show is sponsored by Game Time. Spring is here, which means we have baseball to watch, along with playoff basketball and hockey soon. And you shouldn't have to miss any of the action because of ticket prices. With Game Time, you can get killer last-minute deals and all-in prices for all the big events. There is nothing more frustrating than spending time searching for the best ticket prices, which is why you should not have to when you get with Game Time today. They have flash deals, zone deals, and the lowest price guarantee. So if you are trying to catch a game, concert, or any other event in your local area, download Game Time today and use code BRONCOSCHAT for $20 off. Download the Game Time app and use that code Broncos Chat for $20 off. I love Game Time because of the bird's eye view and the ability to see your seat before you even sit down in it. That way there's no bad surprises when you show up. It's the place to find last minute seats. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Broncos Chat for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code Broncos C H A T for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. So, Sean Payton talked about JJ McCarthy to the media today, which is interesting. And I'll tell you why. But first, he said, I wasn't at JJ's pro day, but we had a private, the next, I think, private meeting the next day here. We sent him a bunch of information, spent four or five hours with him, just made him throw all over again. I think it's pretty obvious that Sean Payton wants J.J. McCarthy. There are always players that coaches and GMs want to get in the draft, and that doesn't always work out in their you know favor. But I think there's no surprise here that Sean Payton wants J.J. McCarthy. He did not say earlier in his meeting that he would be talking about players by name during this process. And then he broke his own rule and named J.J. McCarthy by name. So to me, the cat's out of the bag. It goes all the way back to Super Bowl Radio Row Week when Sean Payton was talking about J.J. And that was sort of the big rumor coming out that the Broncos really like McCarthy. And the question is, will he be there at 12 or will they have to trade up and get him? And now all the signs are pointing towards J.J. McCarthy being a top 10 pick lock. So there will have to be some sort of trade up and it's likely closer to 4, 5, or 6 than 8, 9, or 10, right? If J.J. McCarthy is available with the 10th overall pick, I'm sure Denver can jump from 12 to 10, right? Or if it's even the Bears at number 9. But 
it doesn't look like he's going to get anywhere near that number. Now, I also found this next part very intriguing. Sean Payton on what he looks for in a young quarterback, saying it's decision-making, accuracy, football, the ability to improvise. You know, we don't always get to play in a clean pocket. Those are just some of the things that we'll look closely at and kind of make our own decisions. You are describing J.J. McCarthy, right? J.J. McCarthy does not enter this draft with an absolute howitzer arm that can throw the ball 75 yards down the field. If you remember, like that was kind of Zach Wilson's rise to fame, was at the combine, at his pro day, his ability to just flick his wrist, and it went 65 yards. Now, he had poor decision-making skills and poor accuracy, and that has been fully on display during his time with New York. And that's why you're seeing Sean Payton kind of go a different direction. It's not about the quarterback that can throw it the furthest, which J.J. McCarthy does not win that competition, but he does make very smart decisions with the football, very few turnovers during his time at Michigan. He has been leading an NFL pro-style offense, something that not a lot of quarterbacks have experience at in college. So there are a lot of really nice boxes that McCarthy checks, and those boxes were just called out by name by Sean Payton. So with that being said, let me toss this question your direction. Do you want to draft J.J. McCarthy? We spend all this time talking about how fun it would be to move up in the draft, get a quarterback, and don't get me wrong, that's an exciting feeling, right, to get your belief up of this is the next franchise QB. You can kind of ride that honeymoon phase for a while. But do you think J.J. is the guy, right? Or is he just unfortunately going to be amongst the long list of Broncos quarterbacks since 2015 that have flamed out? I want to know what you think down below in the comment section. I personally am not still fully on board. I, I do think that people lose sight of their draft opinions once college football ends for no good reason. Like, football is played on the field. Don't you think what you saw and what you felt all fall long should supersede how a pro day or combine goes with no pads on and no defensive no defensive players on the field? Like, we're just going to throw out everything we watched over the fall out the window? I think J.J. McCarthy's got a good chance of, as a day two quarterback, developing into something, maybe sitting for a season or two. But I, I don't think that the, he is this surefire thing and that team should be running to the draft table to submit their card with his name on it. Does he have some good moments from the last two years at Michigan? Yes. Has he been a winner? Without a doubt. And that's something that teams and GMs look for. Bryce Young was also a big-time winner. Didn't win a whole lot. Cam Newton, if you remember, coming out of Auburn, he didn't lose at all. Like, going back to his time, he won a JUCO National Championship after you know, the laptop scandal at Florida. Then he won an FBS national championship at Auburn. And then he goes to Carolina where they lose a lot. So for me, I'm not sold on winning college football quarterbacks. That is not going to move the needle a whole lot for me. And then we've shown these numbers before. But when you look at his pro football focus, deep dive analytics and his throwing chart and where his passes have gone, I mean, this is just from last season. 44 attempts according to PFF of 20 or more yards. You're just not going to win in the NFL without being able to connect on deep passes. And there's just not a whole lot of evidence. Not saying he can't do it, right? 54% completion percentage, 10 touchdowns. Like I'm not saying he's bad at those passes, but I'm saying is we have not seen enough tape to believe he can do that over the course of an entire NFL season because lucky for him, he had an awesome offensive line and ground game that was just able to bully teams. They didn't even have him throw a pass in the second half against Penn State. That's just not going to translate to the NFL. So that's where my concerns come in with McCarthy. One last subject before we get you guys on out of here. I thought this would be you know, the best topic to talk about today, but then Sean Payton opened his mouth about trading up, and, well, that's going to lead the show. But new threads coming soon. The Broncos tweeted out uh, a tweet with, New thread soon, and then they had this little gif saying coming soon on it. So here's what we know about the Broncos' new uniform. They are coming for 2024, this season. So expect a debut sometime soon in terms of an unveilment. And now I'm starting to realize why Fanatics had quite the sale on Broncos' uniforms. And I partially wanted to say, why are they so cheap? But now we have a good idea. Uh, same logo and color. So they're not changing the Broncos' logo and they are keeping the traditional colors, but Damani Leach, the team president, said 
full redesign. So expect anything. 75% of the fans, when they did their season ticket holder survey, said they want a new uniform. So this is something that the team went out and asked and got a overwhelming responses of yes and decided to act on what the fans want. And similar to the NFLPA surveys they do at the end of the season, the Broncos players had plenty to say last year, and the team implemented that throughout the course of the 2023 season. Uh, Demonte Leach also said the process started over a year ago. They sent some officials up to Nike headquarters in Oregon, so they have been working on this for quite some time. Personally, I'm excited for a change. I don't think the Broncos uniforms are the worst in the NFL. I don't think they're even like bottom five in the NFL, but I do think there is room for improvement. And if you want a little trip down memory lane, you can look at the Broncos uniform history, which is seen a lot of change over the years, right? But they've had the same uniforms pretty much, I mean, since 2012. And there wasn't a jarring difference from the 97 change to the 2012 change. So to me, I'm open to new uniforms. I like the current ones, but I don't think they are top 10 in the NFL. The weird diagonal that comes across like the top of the chest, that's just got to go. That's just bizarre. Get, get that out of here. Um, I, I think that there is definitely an area to improve in the uniform game. Uh, game. I, I think that if you look around the NFL, what uniforms are some of the top 10 highest sold ones? And you don't really see Broncos in that category. Sure, not having a superstar player probably plays a little bit of a role in that, but I don't know. I just don't think you randomly see Broncos uniforms out and about very much. And when you ask the guy, like, oh, you're a Broncos fan. It, it, like, yeah. Like, oh. And you see other people with other uniforms. They're like, no, I just like the uniform. All right. Other nuggets that came out of the NFL owners meeting. Um, Sean Payton said there's no driver's seat for QB1. He, he didn't want to use that term. It is Jared Stidham's job to lose. Um, but he did not, like, definitively say that it is him in the driver's seat. So take that what you will. Uh, more quarterback competition coming. He's like, you can expect more quarterback competition to be incoming. So the quarterback room, as it should not be, will not be just Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci for 2024. Uh, the NFL, by the way, from a league-wide perspective here, they are banning the hip drop tackle. Now, this is surely going to lead to so much chaos in the fall. I think this may be worse than the challenging of pass interference the one year of that i understand that injuries suck and there have been some great players that have been injured on these tackles of the player basically throwing their entire the defender throwing their entire body weight on a player's knee and ankle as they submarine tackle them if you will like an alligator uh role but i don't see a way how they can properly a uh, officiate this without there being jarring differences of that's a hip drop tackle, but that's not a hip drop tackle. So the rule will be it'll be a 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. I already know that in the first, I'm going to say week one, there's going to be a game that gets decided by the hip drop tackle. Like a team is about to get off the field on third down, and the referees throw the flag, automatic first down, and the team with the lead can kneel out the ball. So get ready for that. That's surely going to blow up in the NFL's, NFL's face. Also, the third challenge. So previously, if you won your first two challenges, you were awarded a third challenge. Now, if you just win one of your first two challenges, right, you get a third challenge. So you know you no longer have to go two for two to get that third challenge. You just got to go one for two. If we get more news and rumors throughout the week, we will be sure to report them to you guys here at the channel. So make sure to subscribe. We'll sign off and let you get back to your Monday.